Hi, I'm Christian Schoen. I'm the host of Hometown Heroes. Come and join me to get to know our local heroes and find out why they do what they do and what we can learn from them. I'm Karen Lane, President of the Las Vegas Valley Humane Society, and this is my story on Hometown Heroes. Thank you, Karen Lane, for coming here today and be a part of Hometown Heroes. Thank you. We invited you because you have done so much for the community of Clark County and Las Vegas, and we wanted to get to know you a little better to find out the reasoning, the motivation, where do you come from to get to this point of where you are now in life? Are you from Las Vegas? I'm actually from the East Coast, from Virginia. Um, and I came out here in 1982 to take the job with the Metro Police Department. Do you come from a small family? My family was not um, a large family, but my father's side of the family was, a, um, he was one of seven, the youngest of seven children. It was a, a very wonderful childhood. Uh, when growing up because you had all these relatives that you knew. What kind of values did your parents pass on to you? And I can remember going to a, um, a home that had children that were um, uh, physically uh, impaired. You know, I loved the children. It was a lot of fun. Uh, they were, the thing that amazed me is that even though they were probably in a great deal of pain, it was obvious that they, you know, they didn't let it bother them and they, you know, they just had a good time when we were there. I think doing those kinds of things, those community activities, kind of taught me the idea of, of giving back to the community. Who was your role model? Was it your mother? She was in some respects. We were uh, very much alike. And as I grew older, I think sometimes we had our battles just because we were so much alike. Was it a saying or a quote you heard early on in life? That was important to you? When I was a very, you know, very young and impressionable child, uh, when John Kennedy came on the scene and, you know, here was a young president full of, um, you know, so youthful and everyone was so, you know, it was just so amazing in, in so many respects. I remember, you know, the speech that he gave, which was to ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And I think, um, I, as many people in my generation, were very motivated by that idea of giving back to the community, that that was a very big part of uh, growing up at that time. And I think, you know, those kinds of things kind of stay with you through most of your life. And that, that certainly has for me. Was there an incident or an episode or something that happened early on that shaped you? I had really wanted to go into the military. Uh, but at that time, in the 60s, there was very little open for women. Uh, you know, you could either be a nurse or you could do clerical work. And I wanted to do neither of those. So I decided not to do that. But in 1972, um, there were a lot of uh, the occupational specialties opened up to women. And so I decided, you know what? I may be in my 30s, but it's never too late if you really want to do something. So I decided to go into the Virginia Air National Guard, and I went in intelligence. It was very different. I had been on my own for most of my life, and to go into basic training with all these young women who were probably 18 or 19 years old, here you were, you know, they kind of called me Ma, and I was the old lady of the group. And it was, uh, it was a very interesting experience. It didn't let it stop you, I mean, even though they were much uh, younger than you. There are things that you want to do uh, in your life, and that was one of those things that I wanted to do. I would never do it again, hmm. but it was a very interesting experience. <laughs> and later on, you got uh, involved, I mean, you, you started working for the police. They said, wow, you know what, with your background, we've got the perfect job for you. We're opening up this police planner position in, the, you know, in our police department, and you, you, know, you should really apply for that. So I did, and I, uh, I got the position, and uh, I'll never forget, I wore 
pantsuits because that was the real thing to do in the, at that time in the 80s. Every, all the women wore pantsuits. And the um, chief of police at that time was um, an older gentleman who told me, my women don't wear pantsuits. And I told him I was not one of his women. And I think he liked that. You know, he liked that, the fact that I talked back to him. So it was, uh, that was my first job in law enforcement. And then you got involved in 911, which was a very big deal because it changed a lot here in Las Vegas. I mean, it has had an impact on thousands of, thousands of people. It did. And I, I took my experience from Virginia. That was one of the reasons I, uh, because I had been working in that communications arena so when, I, when the job opened up with Metro here, you know, they were very interested in the work that I was doing because that's what they were looking at, uh, trying to update their communication system. And a part of that was 911. They had spent some 20 years trying to get 911 in the valley and had not been successful. And there were technology issues, but there were also political issues as well. And this was uh, around the mid-80s, I understand, that this was implemented, 911. We actually went live with 911 in 1987. That's historical here, I mean, in Clark County, to be one of the key people behind uh, 911. The thing that really worked was that the sheriff decided that he was going to take on 911 as a part of the system. And I think because of his political power. I think that really helped in some respects. So that was John Moran. What is the driving force behind your high energy? You know, I just think that everybody's given so much time on earth. You know, my, my mother died when she was 45 years old. And I think that made a very big impact on me because I realized that, you know, we're, we have, we don't have all the time in the world. We really have a set amount of time. And after creating a, a support system for the people here in Clare County, you went on some years later to be, uh, to be running Las Vegas Valley Humane Society and create a support system for the animals here in the valley as well. I never uh, thought that I would be that involved with animals as I became with the Las Vegas Valley Humane Society. And, and over time, you know, that kind of passion, I found a real passion in trying to help animals, probably more so than anything else that I had done. The position you have also is a non-paid position. I can't imagine not doing this and I, um, when I retired, I retired so I could take on the presidency of the Las Vegas Valley Humane Society. Is there a specific event or episode that has taken place uh, during your time with the Humane Society? that uh, stuck with you. Several times we've had incidents when people uh, driving through Las Vegas have lost their animal. For some reason or the other, the animal has gotten out and they've, you know, they've had to leave at some point because they couldn't stay here and continue to look for their animal. They were just traveling through. And so I can remember one instance of a, uh, of a young man in Texas who had lost his German Shepherd here. And we, probably a year later, we found the dog. The dog had a microchip. We called him, it was a Texas number. He had gone home, you know, I think he was back home at that point. And the next day, he was out here picking up that dog. And he was so excited because he said, you know, he had a car and he said, this is the seat where this dog sits and it's been empty ever since the dog's been gone. He was here the next day. He came out to pick up that dog. That's how happy he was. So it's the reward of giving animals a second chance. Well, and finding them a home. I mean, I think that's really important. Um, you know, I, I think there's nothing worse than to have an animal who's hungry and alone on the street because, you know, these dogs particularly are companion animals. And, you know, when they don't have anyone, I think it must be very terrible for them. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nikki Dahman. I'm a volunteer with the Las Vegas Valley Humane Society. I've known Karen Lane and been a volunteer for about seven years. Um, she is an inspiration. Working with her and all the volunteers that work with the Humane Society, we've saved thousands of animals, um, given them a second chance at life, like Shadow. 
um, brought him to new homes, re rehabilitated him, and Karen just is the driving force behind helping us all out. Where are you going? He's had enough. <laughs> Collaboration seems to have been a big part of your life as well, that uh, a group can achieve more than just an individual. Oh, I think that's very true. I think that, you know, if you look at um, what the Humane Society has been able to accomplish, we have a, a core group of volunteers and a broader group of other volunteers who all work together. You know, we all love animals and we may disagree many times about how to do something, but we all agree on what our core values are. In reference to choices you have made, for example, the Humane Society, how we got introduced to that, uh, you mentioned that you saw a cat in front of where you used to live, and, uh, and then you wanted to help out. I lived in an old neighborhood, and um, there were uh, cats in my neighborhood that were feral, and I, you know, I felt like I had to do something because they kept multiplying, and I remember calling up, um, uh, I'm not even sure which group it was at the time, but Judith Ruiz, who's the founder, of the Las Vegas Valley Humane Society came out and she had two traps with her and I thought she was going to handle everything and she she put the two traps down and she said here you go and I realized that I was going to be the one to do the trapping and as it turned out that was probably um, a, a turning point in my life in some respect because there was a real level of satisfaction and getting those cats and getting them spayed and neutered and returning them back to where they came from. It's hard to explain that. You really felt like you were accomplishing something. I mean, you could see it. You could see the fact that all of a sudden you didn't have multiple cats. You know, you had a very limited number of cats and you could stop the cat population in your neighborhood right away just by spaying and neutering the cats. So it was, it was a definite uh, turning point. And as I got more and more involved, in the Humane Society, of course, then I took another task within the Humane Society. So motivational factor has not uh, to be in the acknowledgement, but more than more that the people and animals have been helped. That's right. That's the key. I mean, you know, that's what's really very important. The fact that our impounds are going down because everybody's been involved in this effort. I mean, you know, we have this core group of people, but there are other people. The, the person who is responsible enough to get their animal spayed and neutered, they're the ones that are going to make the difference. The they're the ones that are going to make the So we're all of us working together, spaying and neutering our animals are going to be what makes the difference in the animal overpopulation problem in this valley. There's a lot of courage in your choices too, because failure could have been a reality in many cases, but still you went forward. Well, and I mean, and that's not to say I always succeeded. The things that I learned early on is that sometimes failure is good. Even failure teaches you a lesson, I think, sometimes. What kind of legacy would you like to leave behind? That I, I actually, that I did make a difference. That um, I think that's important. I think everybody basically wants to believe that they were able to accomplish something when they were alive. You know, I think it's really important that we all count for something, that our lives count for something. And I certainly, you know, want that. I want, that's what I want people to think about me. That you made a difference. That I made a difference. That my life counted for something. And I, I think that's probably true of many people, but I would like to believe that that happened. I want to go out with a bang if I'm going to, you know, I, I really want to be able to believe that I accomplished something. Thank you so much for being such a great inspirational role model to everyone here in Las Vegas and Clark County. Well, thank you very much. What keeps us all living together and working together is that we all want a better life, not only for ourselves, but for the people that we love and the community in which we live. Thank you for joining us. If you are a local hero or you know someone who is, please contact us. See you next week.